All right, very well. Yes, good. All right, okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Malini, for your space one presentation. I'll move on to space two. Um, because of the, the data available to us, um, the trends will not be from 2005 to 2015, as the title indicates. So it will be from 2009 to 2019, with some exceptions, that, again, depending on how many, how much data we have for each year. Um, as before, I will, this is a, just a snapshot of the trends. Um, take care to not uh, assume that we can just compare each country with these um, spark lines because the numbers are not, you know, the, the scale is not the same. So this is just an idea of the trends and how much it has increased or decreased. So the same logic applies as for space, the space one representation, where we can see, you know, the red means it has a significant, what would we consider significant increase, green means a significant decrease, and yellow is more or less a stability. So again, take care because as you can see, maybe stability doesn't mean flat, but overall stability. Uh, we can see here that looking at this and um, this park line, these graphs, uh, we can see that there is not a clear pattern that we have all kinds of trends in different areas of Europe. And then we have a, a small number of, of um, nations where the increase or decrease are remarkable, you could say, um, that is greater than 40% or smaller than 40%. I mean, decrease of, or increase of greater than 40%. And this is 14 countries we, are, I would choose, uh, we have chosen to present. So for examples of decreases, of you know, great decreases. So here we have Bulgaria. So we say that they decrease from 2009 to 2019, staying below the European um, average and median. Uh, just a note that uh, when there is a gray column, it means that I, we, I had to do a uh, calculate and interpolate because again, we do not necessarily have data for each year. Oh, wait, oh, I think I made a mistake here. It wasn't, wait, I don't know what I'm, oh, oh, the, oh, this is very weird. Uh, I don't know why it's, it's this is like this but let me just what is going on oh i see now okay so sorry there's for some reason it's it's copied two times the presentation one is in presentation mode sorry so this is this is, slide actually has the percentage of decrease so this is bulgaria has a decrease of 69 percent here we have estonia decrease of 52 percent above but the rates are above the european average and median here we have the Spain administration. We have a decrease of 42%. And here we have Switzerland, where we have a decrease of 50%. And we can see that it's, it's very low to the European average and median rates. And 2010, because again, data availability. And we have um, 10 examples of um, remarkable increases. So the first example is Austria, where we have an increase from between 2009 to 2019 of 51%. Again, sorry. <laughs> um, this is Azerbaijan. We have an increase of 157% from 2019 and 2019. We have an interpolation in 2016. Here we have Croatia, an increase of 2077% from 2009 to 2019 staying below the European average rate and median rate. Here we have Greece, 2010, 2019, interpolation for 2012, uh, increase of 155%. Here we have Italy, we have a uh, increase to 144% between 2009 and 2019, staying below the European average and median rates. Here we have a graph for Lithuania, Again, sorry, um, we have an increase of two, uh, 163 percent between 2009 and 2019. Here we have Moldova, 2009, 2019, but the last year has been interpolated with the data between 2018 and the latest report that still has to come to has to be published. So increase of 59 percent. Here we have Portugal with an increase between 2009 and 2019 of 97 percent. Romania has a increase of 161% between 2009 and 2019. 
here we have Serbia, which is an interesting case of a very large, a very, very large increase. And it is important to take into account that the Serbian probation agency is relatively new in terms of history. So we have a large increase here. And in terms of explanations, unfortunately, as you have noticed, I, I have been showing the graphs, in, unlike my colleague, Melanie, who has ex provide explanations or, oh, this data could be explained by this and that. Um, we have a less information for probation data and to understand the trends. So we are very open to any assistance or any ideas, suggestions of, you know, how to explain these trends, especially in comparison with the prison data. So what I would, would be recommended is to keep in mind what you saw with the Melanie's presentation and compare with the probation data, because again, you cannot just, you should not, at least, you know, from an empirical point of view, um, just compare decreases, increases, and make conclusions from that. You have to also consider what is the increase and decreases and what are the trends between probation and prison to make conclusions, to make meaningful conclusions. So here we have, uh, we have two, uh, two, two examples. So we have here two cases where if we look at the prison data, there has been a decrease. But in Estonia, we have a decrease in prison rates, but we also have a decrease in um, probation rates. The rates of probation is per 100,000 people, um, inhabitants. And in case of Romania instead, we have a decrease in prison, probation, uh, prison rates and an increase in probation rates, which would be the, you know, in a sense what people might think happens. So here we have, an, in a sense, and more than it's more, less than I can really answer questions, specific questions about these trends. It's more like here's a, the data we have, and we are very open to any compliment and any insight that other people can provide to us. And thank you for your attention. And sorry again for the confusion with the percentages. So that is all. No problem at all. That was most interesting. We, um, we we have a couple of questions, please. Um, one from Natalie de Grandi, who you might know of, um, from Switzerland. Um, she says, you spoke about the general trends. For those countries where rates have risen sharply, have you observed a significant change in the proportion of inmates sentenced, especially for drug offences? Oh, well, that I cannot really comment on that. I mean, maybe Melanie can help with the prison data, um, but uh, so because I personally do not have an answer for that. Yes, if, if I can just say something uh, for the, um, the prison statistics, we know that uh, um, drug offenses are uh, the category for which there are more um, prisoners uh, sentenced for. But we have also noticed that in the couple of last years, uh, this percentage uh, tends to, um, to decrease. For example, between 2019 and 2020, we have a, a decrease of um, almost 4%. So I don't know if this uh, answers at least partially your question, but we do know that um, there, there is a tendency to, to decrease. Yeah, what I would just add is that this is not something I we have looked into specifically, uh, we, but it's something that we could take into account and consider in the future with the data we collected. But yeah, it's a interesting question, I find. Uh, I think Marcelo wants to speak. Yeah, maybe I can add something. Uh, so um, the, here we are talking about stock uh, data, eh? um, persons that are in prison on a probation on 31st uh, January. Um, the stock is heavily influenced by uh, people sentenced to long uh, imprisonment sentences. And the, the main sources for that are violent offenses and uh, drug offenses across uh, Europe. Um, and so the persons are sentenced for a long time and they remain in prison. And so you count it year after year and the, the number, um, even with a stable number of people being sent to prison every year, as these people remain for a long time, they are always there. So a, a nice example of uh, how you can change things because the, the idea here was to see uh, the impact on, on criminal policy also of these statistics. Uh, Melanie mentioned a change in the law in, the, um, in Spain in 2010, 
And this law um, abolished some minimum prison sentences uh, for, um, for drug offenses and also allows indirectly uh, the, uh, the expulsion of uh, persons uh, sentenced for, uh, uh, for drug offenses after they have served a, a part of their um, a large part of, of their sentence. And uh, you can see immediately the effect that this had uh, on the prison population. Uh, it was just a small changes in a ch change in the, um, uh, in the law, but it had a major impact on the long run. The thing is that in the current um, political um, tension that uh, one can feel across Europe, um, these are not the kind of laws that are easily uh, accepted. So uh, from a practical point of view, the best solution is to have a, a, a general law that changes things. And then in one chapter, uh, there is a small modification. Um, and this small modification can have a, a huge impact. But okay. if you want to, to sell these telling to people, let's reduce the length of the sentences. It will never, it will never pass. Thank you, Marcello. We do have a couple of other questions that have come in uh, leading up to our, our break at 10 to. Um, uh, a big one here. How do you project the trend of prison populations in a couple of years? That's a big one for anyone to, to, to take on. Um, that's from Alison Samanti. Yeah, maybe I can say something about that. So the um, as you have seen, Space One, we have already published 2020, which is 31st of January. This is just before the uh, lockdowns. Uh, so as some of you may know, we have been following up what happened during the pandemic. And we, made, we have made two publications um, in the series of space, but specifically dedicated to that. And um, we will make a third one probably by September with the whole year 2020. So there was an impact on, on the, the lockdowns changed completely. The, the, the the way in which crime was occurring so they they will probably have an impact but we will see it more clearly um in uh yeah in a few months but uh, for the question itself it's very difficult to make uh, projections because if you have probably if you when you studied uh, if you got a classic uh, professor she or he would have probably told you the marxist idea that uh, uh, the prison uh, is the reserve army of uh, workers. Eh? And so with that uh, classic explanation of Russia and Kirchheimer, uh, a financial crisis like the one that started in 2008 should have led to an increase in the prison population rate. But what you see almost everywhere is a decrease. Uh, okay. This is completely against any prediction. So it's not so easy to make predictions in two years from now. Um, now that the lockdowns are, uh, have, um, uh, have disappeared almost in most countries, um, I don't see any reason for the current uh, trend to change uh, radically. Okay. Uh, many people talk about the new normality, I don't know what that means. Eh? So, uh, so let's see. Yes, and yes, thank you very much, Marcello. That was a, a large question. But look, thank you very much for your, your rapid summary of um, the space statistics one and two over all subject areas. And we look forward to honing in, obviously, more on foreign nationals in specifically um, later on after the break.